a lamp dealer got an order to make three lamps of this shape also the lamp should be absolutely identical that is they should be of the same shape and the same size now can you identify this part of the lamp what shape is it yes this part of the lamps is in the shape of an arc now the lamp dealer had these circular coils of different radii so he had these three different circular coils of different radii his aim was to make those three lamps using these circular coils also he should ensure minimum wastage so first he takes a coil he measures this part of the lamp and he finds that the straight line distance is 30 cm so he takes one of the circular coils and measures a cord of 30 cm in that coil and he makes a cut he gets this arc so using this arc with this distance equal to 30 cm he will make this lamp next for the second lamp what he does is he takes this part of the circular coil once again he measures 30 cm makes the corresponding cut and gets this arc so he sees that the arc which he gets in this case is identical that is is of the same shape and the same size as that of the arc which he got in the first case now he takes the remaining part of the circle he sees that there is no way in which he can cut another arc corresponding to a cord of 30 cm in this remaining part so he throws away this uh, uh, coil next he takes another circular coil with a different radius he measures 30 cm and makes a cut what he gets is this arc but to his surprise he sees that this arc is not identical to the previous two arcs which he got that is although this distance is 30 cm this arc is not the same as that of the arcs which he obtained from this circular coil how is it so so we have these two circles with different radius now even though the length of the cords is the same that is even though this is 30 cm this is 30 cm but this corresponding arcs are of different lengths so how did this happen recall the formula for arc length the arc length is given as theta by 360 into 2 pi r so when will two arc lengths be equal firstly they will be equal if theta that is the angle subtended by the arc is equal and secondly if the radius is the same so in the case of first two arcs what he did is he cut it from the same circle so r was the same also he took equal cords that is 30 cm each we know that equal cords subtend equal angles at the center this we have already proved so the theta which is the angle subtended by the cords or the corresponding arcs was also the same hence the arc length was the same in the first two cases but in the third case he took a circular coil with a different radius so r was not the same hence he got an arc with a different length and he failed to make identical lamp now talking of arc length even if we have two arcs of the same length they may not be congruent 
So as in this case, we see that this arc and this arc, they are of the same length. Let us see whether they overlap each other or not. Well, we can clearly see that they do not overlap each other. That is, although they are of the same size, but they are not of the same shape. So same size. but not same shape. So this condition is not satisfied. Hence, these two arcs are not congruent. So for congruency, we need to ensure same size and same shape. When will two arcs be of the same shape? Well, there is something called the measure of an arc. The measure of an arc is the angle subtended by the arc at the center. That is, it is its central angle. So the measure of this arc AB is the measure of this angle because it subtends this angle at the center. It is 60 degree in this case. The measure of this arc CD is also 60 degree in this case. So we can say that the measure of arc AB is equal to the measure of arc CD or we can say that arc AB and arc CD they are of same shape. But if we observe these two arcs, once again we see that they are of the same shape but not of the same size. Hence even these two are not congruent. So when will two arcs be congruent? Well, two arcs will be congruent firstly if they are in the same cell circle or in congruent circles and they have equal measures. So these two conditions need to be satisfied. That is, they should either be in the same circle or congruent circle to ensure that the radius is the same and secondly, the measure of the central angle, that is the angle subtended at the center, should be equal. Only then we can say that the two arcs are congruent. So as we can see in this case, this arc and this arc, they are in congruent circles because the radius is 3 units. Also, the central angle is the same. So these two arcs, perfectly overlap each other. Hence, these are congruent arcs. Now, if we have congruent arcs, what can we say about the corresponding chords? That is, what can we say about these chords knowing that these arcs are congruent? Can we say that these chords are equal? Well, yes, we can. Let us prove it. But before that, let us come to this fields again. In our previous lecture, we have seen that Mr. James had this circular cricket field and he constructed a square football field out of the circular cricket field. Now, these four regions, region 1, 2, three, four, this, these four regions were left over after making this square football field. He wanted to make a circular seating arrangement along these arcs. So he, he wanted a circular seating arrangement, but he wanted to use just one of these four regions for seating and he wanted to use the one which would accommodate maximum number of people that is he wanted to use the arc which will be of maximum length so without measuring these arcs can you say which one should he use well after you see this lecture you will be able to answer this question
So first, let us prove this theorem. If two chords of a circle are equal, then their corresponding arcs are congruent. So we see that in this circle, chord SP is equal to chord RQ. These two are equal. So the corresponding arcs are given by these red arcs, arc SP and arc RQ. So even these will be congruent. Let us see how we can prove this. So we have this circle with SP is equal to RQ. Now we need to prove that arc SP is also equal to arc RQ. That is this arc is congruent to arc RQ. For that we need to first join each of these. Join AS, AR, AQ and AP. Now again we take help of triangles. What are the two triangles we see? Well, we see triangle PAS and triangle QAR. Let us see if we can prove them to be congruent. So in triangles PAS and triangle QAR, first thing, AS is equal to AR. AS is equal to AR. Why? A is the center. S is a point on the circle. So AS is a radius of the circle. Similarly, R is a point on the circle. So AR is a radius of the circle. So AS and AR, they are the radii of the same circle. So we have AS equal to AR. Secondly, AP is equal to AQ. Once again, they are the radii of the same circle. Also, it is given that SP is equal to RQ. So SP is equal to RQ. It is given to us. So in these two triangles, we have these three things as equal, which are the three corresponding sides of these two triangles. So we have side, 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 three corresponding sides of these two triangles are equal. Hence we can say that these two triangles, they are congruent by SSS congruency axiom. So triangle PAS is congruent to triangle QAR by SSS congruency. Now from this we have this angle is equal to this angle because these are the corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So this angle which is angle PAS is equal to angle QAR. So angle PAS is equal to angle QAR because these are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Now what we need to prove? We need to prove arc SP is equal to arc RQ. We know that these two angles are equal. We also know that congruent arcs subtend equal angles at the center. So since these angles subtended are equal, we can say that arc SP is congruent to arc RQ. So arc SP is congruent to arc RQ because if two arcs subtend equal angle at the center then they are equal. So since the angle subtended by these two arcs that is angle PAS and angle QAR are equal means these two are congruent. Now can we prove the converse as well? That is if two arcs of a circle are congruent then the corresponding chords are equal. That is, if we have arc PQ congruent to arc RS, can we say that chord PQ will be equal to chord RS? Let us try and prove this. So if two arcs of a circle are congruent, the corresponding chords are also equal. It is given 
that arc sp is equal to arc rq now we need to prove that cord sp is equal to cord rq how can we do that first let us join as ar ap and aq now we see these two triangles triangle pas and triangle qar let us see if we can prove them to be congruent now in triangles pas and qar as is equal to ar because as is a radius of this circle also ar is a radius of this circle so they are the radii of the same circle also it is given that arc sp is congruent to arc rq we know that congruent arcs subtend equal angles at the center so arc sp subtends this angle so sp subtends this angle which is angle pas angle pas at the center and arc rq subtends this angle which is angle r a q at the center so this is angle q a r angle q a r so we have angle p s equal to angle q a r because p s and q r are congruent arcs so equal arcs subtend equal angles at the center also ap is equal to aq again these are the radii of the same circle so ap is equal to aq so we have these three conditions which hold side angle side so for these two triangles we have a pair of corresponding sides a pair of included angles and another pair of corresponding sides that is two pairs of corresponding sides and one pair of included angles which are equal so we can say that these two triangles are congruent by sas congruency now given that these two triangles are congruent their corresponding parts will also be equal so sp will be equal to rq so we have cord sp equal to cord rq corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal so we see that if two arcs of a circle are congruent then the corresponding cords are also equal so now coming back to our field once again we have these four regions region 1 2 3 and 4 now which arc should he use to ensure maximum seating arrangement that is which of these four arcs is maximum in length well now we know that equal chords subtend equal arcs that is if the chords are equal the corresponding arcs will also be equal this is a square field so each of these sides is equal these sides are in fact the chords of this circular field hence the corresponding arcs will also be equal so each of these four arcs are exactly identical and it does not make a difference in which he makes the seating arrangement all are of the same length so mr james could use any of these arcs to make the seating arrangement so we have seen that equal chords if we have equal chords then the corresponding arcs are equal also if we have equal arcs in a circle or we can say congruent arcs then the corresponding chords will be equal so these two hold now 
in our previous lecture we have seen that if we have equal chords then the angle subtended at the center will be equal and vice versa that is if the angle subtended at the center are equal then the chords will also be equal so combining these two we have equal chords imply equal angles also equal angles imply equal chords similarly equal chords imply congruent arcs and congruent arcs imply equal chords in same or congruent circles so if we have any one of these three conditions which holds true the other two will automatically hold true so if we have either congruent arcs or equal chords or equal angles at the center if we have any one of these then the other two conditions will always be satisfied so you should make a note of it that these three are interdependent